simple, folks. We don't have much to do here in Texas, so we gotta make our own fun. We call this tractor surfing. Yeah. Japanese whiskey. It's been in the news a lot recently, and there's some of the biggest brands in Japanese whiskey that are disappearing. Now, is this not a big deal? Is this a huge deal? We're going to ask the level three whiskey sommelier what the hell's going on with Japanese whiskey. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. Number one, it's true, they are discontinuing the 17-year-old Hibiki, and they'd already had plans to discontinue the 12-year-old Hibiki. This is my last bottle of 12-year-old Hibiki, and we're gonna drink some of it right now. Okay, so give us a snapshot. What the hell's going on so with So basically, Japanese here's oh. what happened. Essentially, uh, back in the 80s, across the world, Clear spirits sort of exploded into the zeitgeist in a way they had never been before. Sure. Vodka became cool, gin became cool, and in Japan, a lot of clear spirits sort of took over, hmm. exploded across the world, and whiskey started having problems. Uh, sales dropped, right. demand tanked. So they scaled back their production. Yeah, in America, we answered that with bullshit things like light whiskey. <laughs> which was a blend of basically vodka and whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, we're like, no, because basically everyone was like, we like vodka, and whiskey was like, wait guys, we can do that too. <laughs> it's just a little brown, don't yeah, worry. Just a little. In Japan, they scaled back production, because here's how Japanese whiskey works. Instead of like in Scotland, where you have 100 distilleries, and they'll purchase from all these distilleries, blend them together, and have a blended malt. Right. Instead, J Japan's whiskey is sort of vertically integrated. So you'll have one company, who will own half a dozen brands okay. and several distilleries and a dozen ways of making whiskey. And they will use only their own products to create their product lines. So this is Centauri, is the, yeah. main, the main company. Main company. Hibiki is the... Hibiki is one of the brands. Okay. Yamazaki is a distillery. Okay. Uh, Hakushu is a distillery mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. Right? There's all these other brands. They're using all their own products and they don't work well with others. Sure. And Nika's doing the same thing. They've got Yoichi and... Uh, Miyagikyo and so Nika many, so and... So if it's, it sounds like some whiskey conglomerates, there's mm -hmm. a handful of it. Yeah, just drink, drink. For lack of a The big word. players, like Coke and Pepsi. Sure, how many of those big players are there in whiskey? Really only two. Really? In Japan, only, really, really only Suntory and Nika. Wow. Okay. Now there are other players in the game showing up doing really cool things. But there's lots But of, no one that's king at that level. There's lots of distilleries, lots of brands, but mm -hmm. in terms of like the owners. There's Coke and Pepsi. What happened was, they cut back all the supplies, right? Yeah. And then in the last, in the mid-90s, leading into the 2000s, all of a sudden, thanks to Bill Murray. <laughs> uh, which yeah. was, was actually the very first moment I realized Japanese whiskey was even a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for, for five minutes, I thought they just made up Japanese whiskey for the movie Lost in Translation. No, that was a Hibiki 17. Which is an amazing movie. Yeah. I think, oh, that's clever. They invented Japanese whiskey for Bill Murray to travel across. No, yep. it really existed. Several course, things happened. For a relaxing time. The rest of the make, make it, it Suntory, Suntory time. time. <laughs> uh, the rest of the world started finding out about Japanese whiskey and that it was amazing. And uh, we can talk the history of Japan, but um, then a couple other things happened. Mm. They got named best whiskey in the world. Yeah. Like even in Japan, mm -hmm. they came out with a TV show mini series on the life and history of Masataka Takatsuru, who was the guy who essentially was one of the two men who brought whiskey to Japan. So this guy, this guy is kind of the, the great grandfather of all Japanese One of whiskey. him and Shinjiro Tori. Are those the Centauri and Nika guys? Yeah. Oh, so those two guys. They founded the Centauri together. Okay, so they founded the Centauri. We, when they started Yamazaki and, okay. and Centauri, yeah. uh, Masataka was the distiller, yeah. and Shinjiro was the owner of the company. Okay, where did Nika And after about 10 years, Masataka decided to go do his own thing. He moved up to the northernmost part of Japan mm -hmm. and opened Nika. Oh. So, and became a competitor with Shinjiro, Shinjiro Tori. Oh. So the two grandfathers started together. Right. The Hibiki 17 is being discontinued. Yep, the 12 is already done. The 12 is already done, and then there was another one. No, they also had the 21 and the 30. In theory, they may keep those, who knows. Okay. Now, uh, here's the cool thing. And let's pour some Nika, and I got out 
then Anika is no longer make, uh, releasing age statement whiskey to the world either. Mm. So because the demand, I still have Anika 21. Now the good news is, is that they've uh, invested uh, across the industry almost $200 million in revamping the whiskey industry in Japan and investing in new stocks. Wow. So they have upped the shit out of their production. Oh, man, this thing. No, this is glorious. Remember, this is the guy who trained in Scotland oh, that we're drinking this now. This is just... So, um... I gotta tell you, uh, between the two... Yeah, this is my preferred. Yeah, that's gonna be friendly and this wonderful is more like and Scotch. easy. This is This has got some, uh, some interesting, if not challenging, bits in there. Yeah. But the good news is, they're investing hundreds of millions of dollars in additional production, which means this is a short-lived problem. Okay. This problem is maybe 20 years at the most, so, right? Well, so within 20 years, years from now, that's a long Yeah, but I'm time. saying inside, at most, that's the outside. Okay. I'm saying 10 years from now, we could be drinking really amazing whiskey again. Sure. Right, and, and it's not that it's gonna go downhill before then, but I'm just saying we could see a resurgence in age statements within a decade. This particular whiskey Ooh, is this a Centauri fruit. Was but this a Centauri? Yeah, Nika? this is Nika. This is Nika. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, between these two companies, mm -hmm. do uh, they do they have a wheelhouse, or is it like Nika specializes? I in... think so, but okay. this is my personal preference. Okay. I think that all the Yoichi and Nika stuff is the closest that Takatsuru could come to making Scotch, not in Scotland. You think he was going for Scotch? I think he's going for Scotch. Okay. Whereas Yamazaki and Centauri were going for Japan's version of a whiskey, hmm. which may have had some smoke sometimes and maybe not, but was a little more aimed at more floral and light and approachable and nuanced. He was more aiming at a really complex and rich, basically, scotch. Yeah. This is pure opinion. Earthy. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's and man, did he achieve it. Sure. Now, this is called pure malt. You ready to really nerd out? Oh God, what have we been doing so far? Now, this term used to be used in Scotland to refer to blended malt whiskey. This is not a common term. No. Okay. But it was in Scotland. It used to be called blended malts or vatted malts. Mm -hmm. And then Cardew Distillery started referring to one of theirs as a pure malt, meaning only malt. Okay. But immediately there's this outcry that they were trying to pretend that it wasn't blended whiskey even though it was, right? They're trying to pretend, instead of saying single malt, they said pure malt. Mm. When they were saying was, no, we mean it's only barley. Right. It's pure, but it's blended from a bunch of different distilleries. Sure. And so the Scottish Whiskey Association got involved and said, no, hell no, you can't call things pure malt. From now on, the only thing you can call blends from multiple distilleries is blended malt whiskey. Right. And that eliminated pure malt. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. That never applied to Japan. And so Japan still well, uses the pure moniker malt. pure malt to refer to a blend of malt whiskeys from multiple distilleries. This one's coming so, uh, from Miyagikyo and Yoichi. So now there's no law regulating Japanese whiskey. That's the other question. And so there's no legal so, definition of Japanese whiskey. Let me ask you this. Because Japan can effectively source from anywhere in the world and still call it Japanese whiskey. Mm -hmm. They are not regulated nearly to the extent that a lot of other countries are in terms of calling it you know, that country's whiskey. Uh, do you think there is a risk in the short term for the halo of Japanese whiskey to get a hot shit dropped on it because they are just scrambling getting whiskey from anywhere? Or do you think culturally they care enough about quality that they're going to make sure, no, 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 we're going to source some stuff, but it still needs to maintain the integrity of what it means to be a Japanese whiskey? I think the answer is likely both. Okay. So I think when I think when you're talking about the legacy brands like Nika and Suntory, Yamazaki, these guys, yeah. I don't think you have to worry about them. I think if they ever decide to source stuff, we're all going to know about it, right? And I think that it won't result in a crappy product or result in whatever they decided to create. Sure. Now, on the other hand, you have a ton of new companies creating brands because Japanese whiskey is so popular right now. Yeah. You have a lot of bandwagon companies. Yeah, and the bandwagon companies don't have a reputation. No. They just see. A they just see dollar of, signs. They see a window of time to capitalize on this amazing reputation that Japanese whiskey has right now. Yep. And that reputation can totally <laughs> just fall apart in the next few years, depending on what happens. Who knows? Then you end up with stuff like this. Yeah. All right. This is Rio or Rio? I don't know. I'm going to show you what happens when you get a true, more of a budget blend from the big name companies. Sure. Suntory has the Yamazaki Distillery, the Hakushu Distillery, mm -hmm. and the Chida distillery. Okay. The Cheetah dominantly makes grain whiskey. So think of it like the grain whiskey that goes into Johnny Walker's or 
chivas or the grain you blend with malts to create sure. blended scotch. Yeah. Right? So this is their version of like a chivas or a Johnny Walker. Or it's two malts and two uh, malts from two distilleries and grain whiskey from one distillery. It's three distilleries in total. Yeah. In Scotland, that just called blended scotch. Right. It's in Japan. It's all under one company. It's called Toki. From and people kind of crap Toronto. on it the way that people crap on Johnny Walker, Red, and so it's everywhere. And, it's aimed at a mass market, I'm assuming. Yeah, and this kind of thing, it's not going anywhere. So if you like this, it's not going anywhere because it's easy to make. You don't have to depend on 17 year old barrels. But see how grain bright that is? Yeah, and it's also. It seems, Man, that's almost coconut. It seems very middle of the road, a mess. Yeah. Like trying to please the most number of people. Yeah, it's super shiny. That's really light and bright. And this is overly sweet. This is almost a little clingy. It's almost vaguely sake like. It's getting there. Right? A thinned out caramel note. I'm not getting any barrel. Yeah, I want to show you just one single, what would be a single malt. Single malt yoichi. Scotch, right? This is single malt yoichi. This is one of the Nika distilleries. Okay. Right? Yeah. So what goes into that Nika aged is a mix of yoichi and miyagikyo. Mm hmm. That's nice. Isn't that nice? And yeah. It's Smoky. Really nice. and in honor of Japan and their situation, I'm thinking of ways to use whiskey beyond just putting it in a glass and drinking it. Oh no, there's a bag. There's, oh, it's never a good sign. This is new and creative ways to penetrate markets with whiskeys. And I'm helping out Japan so they're never in this situation again. Oh! We got some amazing sushis. Oh! Amazing All sushis. right! Now, instead of. I want some sushi. Instead of. Soy, whiskey, whiskey. Oh, I'm all in on this. <laughs> can we have a little container we can do like you would for soy sauce? Yes. Do you have chopsticks? Yes. This is the best thing that has ever come out of a bag in Rex's presence. I'm helping. So we have uh, a salmon delight combo. Yeah. Right here. And we have tuna. We got some rolls, and then we so, got the sashimi. Do we want? We got the sashimi. Something light and sparkly, or something rolls. with a little character. So for our... I'm thinking, what does soy do for sushi? A salt taste and a little character. So I'm thinking that thing that's trying to be. A I'm scotchy thinking taste. that miyagikyo. Do you realize that we're about to use like a $700 or the yoichi is what I'm talking about? We're about to use like a $700 whiskey bottle to dip sushi in for science. You ready? Yeah. I really do want to Dude, try Dude, you just poured this like $80 right here. Cause it's, yeah, I just licked that off the table. Ah! <laughs> I really do want to try this idea though. I think it's a great idea. I think it could be really good. <laughs> Are you going for sashimi? You going for I'm gonna go for sashimi first. You're gonna go for sashimi yeah. first? I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna let the rice soak up. Do you realize how awesome this is gonna be? I'm getting maximum soakage because the rice soaks it up. Don't let rice pieces fall in there. <laughs> oh my fuck, that's good. Yeah? <laughs> I'm not joking, that might be the best sushi I've ever eaten in my life. That's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Try that. No, 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 no. Try the tuna. Just let it fall in there. Yeah. Damn! This is definitely budget sushi though. Where did you get this? Uh, Uchi? No, you didn't. <laughs> the award-winning restaurant? No. This is better. Really? Yeah. Which one did you do? The roll? Yep. Oh, come on! That's the one. We just. Oh my God. It's an entirely new market for Japanese whiskey. Totally. They never have to be in this situation again. In order for this really to be a suitable replacement for soy, there's one final Ooh. test. Dude, that's a <laughs> not insignificant amount. So I'm gonna make it up. You're a fan, obviously. <sighs> I'm gonna make this specifically for you. All right. And I go for a really smooth wasab. You know you're supposed to put wasabi onto the sushi. I piece. know, but those people are doing it wrong. <laughs> you mean Japan? Yes. <laughs> that right there. You ready? I think that's going to be amazing. All right, here yeah. we go. <laughs> amazing? You need to try that. No, shut the hell up. Oh yeah. Just don't turn it around because it's been sitting there for a while, so. That's good enough. Oh my god. That's really good, isn't it? Oh my god. You were trying to prank me. Oh, really good. And it was really good.
Welcome to uh, Whittington and Whittington's full service hair salon. He has no hair. <laughs> That's how you know I'm good. <laughs> We've got some hair, nice barrettes, pink yellow. I got you some. Uh... <laughs> look like a look like a roller derby. You look like roller derby girl. Complete with beard. <laughs> Here's where shit gets real. You have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> there we go. There you go. It's not really very even. Quite a bit lower than. Ah, that's perfect. My powers are draining. <laughs> Aren't the uh, hairstylists supposed to ask you personal questions? No split ends. This is quality hair. <laughs> So how does it get better than this? How's the family, Rex? How's the home life? Going good? I pay you to shut up. A key component of hair for hobbits. Oh god. What was that a lot? <laughs> I felt like a lot. <laughs> I felt myself getting lighter. I have no idea what I'm doing. Go put curlers in it. And put curlers in it. <laughs> Little flowers. <laughs> Just a couple of bearded dudes. <laughs> I should have called them. Giving each other makeovers. <laughs> uh, that's really cold. <laughs> I like how you just stuck pieces of hair to my forehead. Is it dry? I think it needs to be dry. Oh, it's all Oh, dry. it's dry. Oh, God. It's totally working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good shit. <laughs> uh, see you in the front. <laughs> the grand reveal. Uh-oh. How do I get this out? <laughs> <laughs> Do we need some more hold and body? Ah, now fluff it out. You're the fluffer. <laughs> oh yeah. That's about as good as we're gonna get for a non-professional hairstylist. See, we'll get reactions to Daniel's work. Oh my god. Wow, you, you're just the purtiest man I ever did see. <laughs> man, I'm getting out of here. You know what? What? I'll take it back. You're kind of great at this. You kind of digging it? <laughs> Yeah.